know. All right, good morning, everybody. If you please take your seats, we'll go ahead and get started. Yes, get as much coffee as you need. How are we doing this morning? Good. That was good. Um, we can try one more time. How are we doing today? Lauren Finnegan. Um, I'm one of your city coordinators. Uh, thanks for coming to the Dallas Entrepreneur Center. We're here every Wednesday from 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, just a little bit about One Million Cups. We are an educational program produced by the Kauffman Foundation to engage, connect, educate local entrepreneurs while helping build startups on a grassroots level. Uh, we have two presenters today. They'll each get six minutes to pitch and then 15 minutes for interactive Q&A. And you can provide feedback, ask anything you'd like. We just ask that you raise your hands high and then we'll come around with the mic. Uh, that way we can hear you on our uh, camera that we're using for our YouTube channel. Um, we can't do this without our awesome vendors, so big thank you to her too for always providing the And then House of Genius for supplying the coffee because we have to stay caffeinated here. So. Started. Um, a big tradition here is to stand up and do a big round of applause every time we have a presenter take the stage. So if everyone could please do that, we have Dennis from Andy Cloud. Please welcome him to the stage. Hi, everybody. Morning. So uh, again, my name is Dennis Dicker, the founder of Amity Cloud. It's a mobile and training management platform for anyone that basically comes into contact with an individual with special needs. That's the one takeaway I want you to go away with. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, I'm a computer engineer. I worked at the patent office for seven years for the federal government. Um, I have real estate experience as an investor for over 10 years. And I started my own home health agency for Medicaid services back in 2011. Um, and then early on, uh, as a real estate investor, I started to use tools that were out there at low cost to help me minimize my costs managing my real estate. And I put together these tools and it saved me about $1,000 a month as I um, increased my uh, real estate assets. And later on, um, as I decided uh, about 2011, I decided to actually open up a home health agency. And from there, I knew that I could, um, I had a starting point from my real estate experience and the tools that I used. I knew that a uh, caregiver had to go to a home and the person that was living in the home, even though they're not an actual tenant, there's someone that needs some type of service. So what I did was I, I use these tools as the starting point. And as we opened our first um, group home for adults with autism, um, I was able to minimize costs um, from day one. And even though I was able to minimize costs, I knew that there were more problems in the home health industry than I thought. And as we added more staff, we grew to 50 staff within about a year. And uh, during that time, I was able to identify the, re the remaining needs in order to grow properly. And I was able to build a solution because of the continued over overtime that I was facing as a home health provider. And I knew that it was not only a problem that I was facing, but an industry-wide problem that was costing more than $6 billion a year. And it's growing. So what I did was I, I continued to test the products that went into Amity Club. And I noticed that it was saving us more than 95% than the average provider. And though, and though I, I incorporated the real estate um, tools, I started to add additional tools. One of those tools was Beacon Technology. So these beacons are placed throughout homes uh, at least three beacons, and a person that's in the in the system were able to triangulate and pinpoint their location within a home. And if they're in the community, we're able to 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 put expenses on debit cards so we know where expenses are being spent at all times. 
And in addition, we're, we're integrating with QuickBooks, so now home health providers can directly export their, their payroll directly into um, QuickBooks for easy uh, payroll. And in addition, we're, we're able to, uh, with, our, with our Beacon technology and GPS um, integration, we're able to, we're able to provide HIPAA compliance, a, a HIPAA compliance solution for all the caregivers that are, that are coming into the life of the individual. And we're able to provide a front, uh, a front end uh, HIPAA compliance solution and a back end HIPAA compliance solution. So now no one can, can go into a person's electronic health record if, not, if they're not actually at the actual home or within a foot of, say for instance, where the medications are supposed to be administered. Let me give you an example. Meet John. He's, eight, he's 28 years, years old with autism spectrum disorder and bipolar disorder. He requires 24 hours of, of caregiving services. In order for him to, to be more independent in his home and community, we're able to, to place these beacon sensors in his home. And whoever comes into his home, we're able to verify their location and based on his care plan, or his behaviors or any other variables, we're able to designate where actual caregivers are supposed to go and make sure that they're there at specific times to make sure that um, tasks are, are completed. If, if he has a community activity, activity we're able to, to communicate directly with the driver or the doctor before he's even there with, with, real, with our real-time um, communication. While our competitors are, are work, working on part of the problem, we're providing a complete solution with, with, free, with free solutions for, for regular users, families, $10 per user for, for um, home health providers, and if they want to set up a facility, it's $20 per facility. We're reaching our, our, our users through social media, and we have a sales lead that's, that works for a, a large um, human services company in 15 states. We're growing fast, and we, we have 10 early adopters right now, and we're, we're heading, heading to more than 25 providers by the end of the year. And we hope you, you're, you're, you're joining us as we, as we scale up to more states. Thank you. Questions and feedback, please raise your hand high and I will bring you the microphone. I'm unclear if this is a home health management service for home health agencies or if this is something for residential use. This is a platform for anyone that provides a service to someone with special needs. So it, it could be a hospice provider, it could be uh, someone who provides services to someone as a home health agency, they would sign on and they would use this, set this platform, uh, invite their caregivers, and they would use this platform to provide services. Real estate investor also. Do you own the properties? Um, for my agency, I did uh, own the property, so I was able to provide services and um, get profit from providing services in those properties. So it was like, you, you own the properties under one entity and then another entity would pay for rent? I'm not being nosy. But okay, so um, what this does essentially is, is creating a market for real estate professionals like you and me. We're able to now um, put our properties up for rent to home health providers now help providers can then connect with real estate professionals um, to, to essentially um, have someone with special needs live in their homes. I think my question comes back to a couple of ones that I asked here. Uh, who's your audience? Are you marketing to caregivers or are you marketing, marketing to real estate professionals? We're marketing to everyone. So, caregivers. Can you answer the question? Are sure. Are you marketing to real estate professionals or are you marketing to caregivers? Who's going to buy your product? Uh, caregivers. If you're a caregiver, you have a family member that has special needs, you can use this product to train. 
if you are um, a real estate professional, you can use this product to manage your properties. If you're a home health provider, you can use this product to invite caregivers to provide services to uh, individual specialties that you're providing services to. Question, in terms of your value proposition at the beginning was to provide 95% savings to like a home care agency and in various areas like uh, training, hiring. How do these beacons, I mean, I understand how these beacons can help ensure care, the care protocol is being handled, but how, I don't see how, how do these beacons impact training, hiring, credentialing, all these other areas that you right. say 95 So when you, um, when you hire someone, a caregiver, they have to go to a home where someone lives and they need to know where all these things are, a CPR kit, where the meds are, and sometimes they forget those things. So we, with our Beacon technology, we're able to provide on-the-job training in case they forget. So if, if there's an incident in the home, we're able to make sure that they go and get that CPR kit, and if they're not, if they're not in the room where the CPR kit, we're able to actually guide them to where the CPR kit to make sure that person gets the proper um, band aid or whatever that needs to be done. Um, and and at, in the actual site, without a third party actually coming in. But how do you get like hiring down to zero? I mean, several of those numbers show back to that job, so it's 25%. So we, we actually, I, I was running low on time. Um, but we, we have an online adaptive training platform. So 90% 90, 90 of the training is done online. Um, so most provider agencies, they have one, two training in person, but most of the caregivers are forgetting what's, what's being taught to them afterwards. We're providing adaptive learning that makes sure the person um, understands the material that's being taught to them. You mentioned that the major value proposition for the real estate is to be able to find tenants. So like to divvy up their house and maybe have a few people living in it, that's my assumption. Is anybody doing that now? Because how does that fit with like assisted living regulation, especially residential right. care homes in Texas? I've, I've never heard of that. So right, so we're actually, we actually build in the regulations uh, for each state. So we actually know how to set up a home and make sure it's regulated so that a real estate professional or a home care provider can provide services in that home. So we're, we're able to, this has been actually reviewed by regulation, uh, licensing um, regulators in the state of Pennsylvania. And so if, if a professional wants to set up a home and, and make sure someone with special needs is living in there, we're able to help that, that um, owner um, do a survey of their home and make sure that uh, someone can live in with special needs. Any other questions or feedback? You, you keep mentioning special needs. Is that is that your entire market or do you also get involved in elder care? Because how big is the special needs market? Um, I just say special needs, but it could be elder care. Um, this can work in, um, in a work environment. It does not have to be in a home. Um, it could be for anybody, actually. You say that you have 10 early adopters, so the, the product is actually functioning. Like, what, right there, that's your entire product, I'm guessing. So yes. what if that is functional right now? All of this has been, um, we've been testing, we've been in beta since 2013. Um, we have about 30,000 hours of behavioral monitoring. Um, we, we, we uh, supported individuals that require two to one care of 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to people who require three hours a week of care. Um, so we we monitored the whole spectrum of individuals that, that require um, caregiver services. Who's working on this with you? Um, so I have a team in Boston. Um, I have a programming team of about um, 10 programmers in Boston. I also have a team in India. Um, I have uh, I have a, a the, the adaptive learning is actually patented technology. Um, my advisor, who's um, heading the programming team in Boston, is behind that. Um, and it's actually being used by universities all um, 
all over the U.S. Um, I have uh, also another advisor who's, um, who's worked at a behavioral health technology company who's, who's uh, helped me through this. Um, I have uh, another advisor who's worked at uh, home health agencies with policies and procedures. Any other questions? We also welcome feedback. all the love in my heart, don't take it personal. Um, I'm more of a person that needs to be drawn to, to the, uh, you, you need to catch my attention. So the tone of your voice is very monotone, so I would really love to see more like, you know, snap, sparkle, like don't be afraid to, to get out there. And I still don't understand 100% what this is about. So if you, if you and I were in an elevator, Dealing this from somebody from last week. <laughs> if you and I were in an elevator and you had 10 seconds, what could you tell me? If I asked you, what do you do? Tell me what your company is about. So it's 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 really hard based on what you know about the home health care market. Um, and that's been my problem because I can go in depth and at the same time if you're if you know what know someone with that's a caregiver, I can the average person. I can <laughs> I can help our platform can help if you want to become a caregiver. You can go to our platform, train once, and apply to multiple caregiving agencies without training more than once. Yeah, that, that's the hard part is communicating to people who are not in your market. The reason why I probably understand what you're doing is because I was raised in residential care homes. My family used to own, my grandmother was one of the, she was the third license holder of an assisted living facility in the country. So I, I fully get what you're talking about. but. Yeah, clarifying that message to people who don't have like my history. I would say my piece of feedback here is in the middle towards the end of your pitch you had the story about John. That was the first time that I was actually able to understand what you were doing. And my question is about know your audience or recognize who it is that you're trying to sell to. That makes it much more clear if you give us an example and then walk us through it. So I would say flip your pitch, start with that, and then build out into the rest of everything you're doing because it's impressive. Thanks. I'm trying to get this from an investor standpoint. Do you have any problems with it? So these people live in your property? No. Uh, they can live uh, at their own home. They can live at an apartment of their own. Uh, they can live in a, a group home. That's uh, that's managed by a home health agency. So they're in your property just during the day. Um, I, they can live. They can live anywhere. This allows them to live anywhere they, they they're interested in living. Well, then I don't get the real estate connection. Okay, I've got X number of properties, and I want to get into this. Am I going to have problems with zoning? Am I going to get any breaks on property taxes? I mean, where, where, from a real estate perspective, where's the income stream? Obviously, it's rent, but it doesn't look like it's a typical, you know, the profile is not that of a typical. So, from a real estate um, investor standpoint, uh, this will help you set up your property so that it's available to a home health provider agency that wants to set up a group home. And once, once they actually rent the property from you, this will give you the assurance that it's managed properly at all times. So you won't have the headaches of going in um, with holes in the wall because people with special needs, things like that, do happen. So you're able to, to have that quality assurance in place without the headaches. Well, how is the property zoned? Is it an office? Is it a home? It's, it's just a regular home. It does not need to be, uh, the zoning does not have to be changed. One last call. Just in terms of feedback, again, if, if you're dealing with somebody who's familiar with home care, there's sort of a credibility issue. I think the most compelling parts is these devices and potentially the adaptive learning. That's where it got really interesting. The other four elements are being handled by a lot of like, people like Access, one of the, uh, right over here, and home care, home base. So I think there's a, it's almost like you're trying to do too much, and wouldn't it make sense to really focus, I mean, I would probably focus on what's, 
your unique element, which seems to be those the two, the top left and the bottom right hand quadrant. All right, our final question: What can the community do for you? Um, the feedback that was given. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Um, thanks a lot for your feedback, and I'll definitely um, put it into consideration. Thanks. One more round of applause for everyone. All right, one quick little break here. Um, reminder that we are active on social media, so if you do have Twitter, we ask that you please use the hashtag 1MCDAO, and we also have all of the uh, Twitter handles up here on our board. Uh, you can do questions, feedback on there as well. We're very active. Uh, we also have our YouTube channel, Facebook, uh, you can subscribe there. We also have a newsletter that comes out every Monday, including today's video. So look for that as well. And then over by the elevator, we do have a board with all of our upcoming events. And you can go ahead and put on yours as well so you can share with the community. Um, and then we do have one more thing, an awesome new app that uh, One Million Cups has put out across the nation. So you can go in there, find Dallas, sign in, and then you can also provide feedback there with a little survey on all of our uh, presenters today. So it's kind of fun, new little ways for us to stay interactive and engaged uh, using, using our phones. So without further ado, I'd like everybody to stand up one more time. We're going to bring up Alejandro from Dead Stock Inc. Thank you. Thank you everyone, I appreciate it. I'm going to start out at the back. I'm going to disappoint you. It's going to be monotone. I am tired. I work at nights. So, throw it out there. Don't, don't take it personal there. <laughs> All right, guys. So, my name is Alejandro Perez. I am the CEO of Data Stocks Incorporated. And you know, I'm going to show you what I got. A little smarter presentation for a smarter audience. So I'm sure you can keep up. All right, so right now in the data markets is a wild, wild west. Uh, when you sign something uh, with any company, they think that all your data you produce with them is theirs and only theirs. So you send them your life away. Now, what's going on is that we are in the information age where data, aka information, is the fuel of this age and is highly unregulated. So now new regulation is coming up, you know, from the uh, privacy, US European Privacy Act. Uh, the news that uh, ruling from the SEC uh, last like Friday. But the whole point of the matter is it's still unregulated. Every company wants data. There's a data race going on. That concerns you because that's your data they're using to monetize without compensating you or letting you know. So pretty much there's two sides to this deal. We have the industrialists on one side, you know, they want to keep the data trains rolling and which means money for them. And our side, which you know, we want privacy, security, and if you're gonna use my data, you should give, give you know give us some money, right? Now the problem is it's really between the haves and have nots. So who are the haves of businesses? Obviously not uh, software non software companies, marketing research. Anyway, their need is they need access to data, data variety, and they need your opt-in. Sometimes they do things without it. In order to produce more money, create more opt-ins, you know, do things. You gotta do things, you gotta make money. People, it's all of us right here. You have a smart device and you're connected to a telecom, AT&T, Verizon, all those guys, all those guys, you're in this column. And you have a need for privacy, money, and control. We don't need to feel safe, compensated, and <coughs> empowered. Just a quick example, how many of you have an Android with Facebook? All right, you're listening to our conversation right now. Just an FYI. So, how are we going to solve this problem? So this is a large market with lots of money in here, and we need a share here. Yeah. And data stocks will be the share. We'll do this by regulating the market, providing a, a data brokering service between the businesses and ourselves. Opt-ins and opt-outs go in and out, and we let them know what data should be, you know, data should not touch, and which data we're open to, uh, you know, for some money or charity or whatever, as long as we get some money out. Uh, I mean, that's, the, that's the definition right there. It's just an opt-in, opt-out platform that facilitates business and innovation to trade behavioral data with legal consent in one location. So if every company in the world creates a website that says opt-in and opt-out, you have to go to each one of them. Here, one location, one app. Uh, there's other pitches in there, but we can go over that later on. 
So what is the value proposition to the users here? I mean, what is the winning hand for you? Well, we are the side for the businesses, but we're going to concentrate on your side. So we have the uh, opt-in for uh, money, you know, opt-in people's money. Uh, I will also provide privacy and security, because you can always opt out. I will represent you when you press opt out on Chrome, Firefox, you know, Netflix, whatever you want. And you can also name your price. Uh, you can say, you know what, my Facebook data is worth $10, not $5. And you can name your price. If we match it, you'll get your money. So our vision, pretty much to be the eBay of data. So you go in there, play around, opt in, opt out, name your, name your price, and find out what happens. Also, we want to be able to uh, provide some kind of championship to the, your data rights. So kind of be the sheriff in town for your data. Uh, how do we make money? So very simply, consent management, resale. A lot of these companies already have your data, but they're not really allowed to ask, use it for secondary purposes, especially now with the new regulations going on. So you can resell your opt-in to them using data stocks for money. Also, data deal brokering, you get a cost plus every uh, transaction, advertising, there's other things. And so, has this been validated? Yes, we've been talking to a lot of businesses that are interested, from uh, telecoms all the way to just businesses that want to have two, like Associate, for example, they have two million people and they don't have to consent, but they already made over $10 million with your data. So, Things like that, that you know, they want to do the right thing and get their opt-in, so we'll help them out. Uh, so where's, where are we in the life cycle of the production here? So on the app, we have two versions, the Pro and the Lite, and we're in development and testing right now. We have, obviously, you have your admin panel and databases in the back, because you gotta, those, every decision you make has to have uh, something. Website 2.0 right now. Trade, uh, the patent is in reviewing. I expect a rejection in three months. And then uh, our competitors, yeah, there's people out there that do kind of similar, but they don't do everything we do. They don't give you opt-in or opt-out, they just say, hey, give me your data, I'll make money with it. We say, hey, you can, make, you can opt-in or you can opt-out. You don't have to make money, but I can still protect you. And that's pretty much it. When it comes to the ask, uh, we can talk about that later, I suppose, any questions. Open in the book. All right, we're opening the floor for questions and feedback. Raise your hand high and I'll bring you the microphone. To ensure that I fully understand, uh, you're not necessarily bartering their data. Let, let's say Facebook. You're not involved with Facebook on the premise of, I'm a Facebook user and Facebook wants to use my data. They already have it. You're not necessary. Where you're coming in is when Facebook wants to sell that data to someone else. Is, is, where, where, is this, where, where is the actual selling of the data? Uh, first of all, is renting data. So it makes it a little more safer because you know what's delete, what is a rent. It's the difference between going to a dealership and going to enterprise rent a car. You have to return this stuff. So that's one. Two, the uh, Facebook situation, they already have the data. They can do legal stuff and sell it. That's fine without your opt in. Your job is when you have the app, you just turn it off, say opt out, and I go represent you, say, hey, Richard. Facebook. I'm sorry, what's your name? Richard. What? Richard. A Facebook richer wants out. Prove it. He opted out. It is by regulation and law. So if you don't, yeah, I subpoena you. If you do play ball, then just play ball. But is that like Facebook using my data, or is that Facebook sharing my data to a third party? It can be a combination. Like you will share the data. Like when you opt in, let's say you opt in. You say, hey, I want money, ten dollars. Is ten dollars good with you? You broke here. What do you think your Facebook's worth? I don't think we'll pay that much, but okay. Let's say I can give you $10. Are you cool? Okay. So let's say Verizon wants your Facebook data. Not necessarily about Facebook, but they want to have all your social media information just to, as a demographic. They want to see that uh, white male, you know, from the ages of 25 to 30, you know, hangs around this area, does this kind of social media activity. And they want to see a million people just like you in a certain area or certain locations around the world. All you have to do is opt in, you say, hey, I have it for ten dollars. Welcome to I use it. That could be Verizon. That could be Associa. That could be any company. It doesn't necessarily have to be Facebook. Just because it's Facebook data, the broker doesn't have to be just associated with Facebook. So yes, you can make a lot of money. If I can sell your Facebook data ten times at five dollars or ten dollars, that's fifty bucks, twenty-five to fifty bucks for you a year. Back here. I would first like to say that I really like your business idea. Um, 
through the value proposition. I'm looking for security, and if I can make money, that's always a good thing, too. Um, in terms of feedback, I would say for the slides, there were a few slides where literally I just caught it for two seconds, and then you were on to the next one, like the status on the patent and the website. If you're literally only going to go to it for two seconds, you could have put that all on one slide, and we would have still got the same message. But you talk very fast. I'm a Southern girl. I talk and I understand slowly. It just kind of felt like I was in a whirlwind. I really wanted to get all of the information, but it seemed like it was going so fast that I was missing something. So just a general critique. I appreciate it. Uh, one million cubs, take a note. Make 10 minutes, not six minutes. So I can slow down. Slow down. Talk to me a bit about your background. It sounds like you're going to need a whole lot of legal expertise to do what you're going to do, as well as data management, databases, and <coughs> brokering of sorts. So where are you coming from? Uh, so can you actually like clarify that question? I mean, it kind of went on some from the legal side, and do I need help? I'm trying to... Uh, what's your background? That's what I'm looking for. Uh, background. I'm a military officer, 13 years in the service, uh, logistics. Oh. I did a uh, whoa, right now. I got some brothers over there. Uh, MBA, legal stuff. I do it all the time. I work for AT&T's big data. And the big question came, and yes, this needs to be legal expertise and it needs to but everything requires money. So with AT&T's, for example, I mean, they had a whole legal team finding ways and loopholes to get your data without paying you. So they'd rather pay those guys for hundred dollars a hour than pay you guys five bucks. And when I asked them, like, why did you just buy their consent? They just laughed at me. That's how this idea started. So. Okay. Could you go back to the slide that says my business in 150 words? A lot. Well, as a suggestion, I would start with that page because I still don't quite understand. I mean, I have an advertising background and all this kind of stuff, and I understand the value of the data, but I'm not getting how it applies to me. You as a person or you as an advertising business? Sorry? You as a person or you as an advertising business? No, I was saying I had an agency. So how did this apply to you as an individual? Right. Okay. So if you download my app, you have every single option in there and i'll show it to you later if you want but we'll have every option let me pull it up and every application you would use are normally the most over 50, most 50 popular applications gmail I mean, netflix amazon video I mean, name it you know, chrome firefox it's all in there so you would go in here i'm about to break the fourth wall or third wall whatever it is here you go, man. Just play around. Oh, that works. So you just go in there, and you just press anything you would see you would like. Like what? Are you a candy crusher? Or a chick fil A? Uh, it's already activated. So let's just go over there. I see you already activated it. Choose. You want to opt in or you want to opt out? Well, out of your data. I mean, yeah. Do you, uh, do you have any deals with Amazon? Do you download their video? Do you purchase anything? As you can see that they can resell that. So the question is, do you want him to resell the data, or do you want to make money when they resell the data? I don't want my data shared. You press That's correct. You're entitled to money. You're saying I'll opt in for a price. Yes. Okay. I'm a data broker. It's personal data or data of my business, either one. Whatever the account you log in with, when you turn it on, it has to be a username and password. And that will be the account. If you have multiple accounts, you have multiple accounts. So this is more uh, slightly feedback from the question. And I, I think it's where a lot of people are coming from. It's very hard to like pinpoint your value proposition. And you have two very distinct ones. So telling us that you're a marketplace is necessary, but it's a marketplace for renting your data, 
And the whole thing about opt-in, opt-out security, I might actually drop that because I think it gets a little confusing. Like just explain what the system is and then explain that as why someone would use you as opposed to your competitor. Like that's your competitive advantage. It's remarkably important. Am I correct? Or? Yeah. It's okay. feedback, so I'll take it. Okay. So you, you keep talking about ten dollars, you know, I mean if you're, let's say you're a you're a real sought after demographic. I mean, could you you could theoretically ask for more? And you're the broker that's going to advocate saying this guy is a, a well sought after demographic, so you guys should pay him a hundred bucks or whatever it is. It's just a one time thing. You just get a hundred bucks and you're done. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can name your, you can put a million dollars in there. It doesn't mean you'll get it. So. I mean, you name your price, there is a, I mean, there's a pro version which allows you to see the trends of how data is selling. So if it's, you know, $7 and you're asking for 50, you, you know, you're gonna be off the money. You know, if you're in the money, you're out of the money, that's it, you know. We're negotiable, maybe it's a dollar a little bit higher, you know, I'll negotiate for you, but you're out of the money, you're out of the money. It's a, every, it's a six months contract for every data deal. So you get that money slowly, but surely. But the beauty is, you, the beauty of data is not like a physical product. You can resell again, and again, and again, and it will re-rent, I suppose. Re-rent again and again. Yes. I think everybody recognizes the problem every time I, you know, terms and conditions, you sign off on it, but you really don't know what you're getting into. That's right. I think it would be, it's kind of a feedback and a question and it would be good to, to share what the magnitude of the problem is in terms of, so how many of these companies are actually selling your, or rent, or using your data without your, without your, shall we say, explicit consent. It's implicit because I've signed it, but I didn't really know that I'm, what I'm signing away. So I think it would be valuable. And I guess that's the question. What is the magnitude? How, how often are we signing off on stuff where we don't even realize that they actually have, do have the right? to give away that data, or to sell that data? So the magnitude, this is a uh, very large multi-million dollar market. So that's the magnitude, and that's because all of us are signing our rights away. And just to grab Facebook, so we grab Facebook up. Facebook itself, just the data, raw data, not the uh, targeted advertising, not the campaign, not the other, like your, the data portion, the sell, rent it out, or the sell, transfer, it's $800 million. Just that portion. That's the thing, like this, you know, represents maybe 1% of the revenue, very, very little, but it's still $800 million. And that could be in your pocket. You know? I'll take a fee, I'll take a cut, but give you $800 million for the people, you know? Or a charity of your choice. Um, so I have two questions. One is, how do you ensure that the companies that are getting this price from will pay you? And the second one is, <coughs> Oh my gosh, I really see a secondary market here. Are you going to develop that um, with aggregation and reselling and things like that? Yeah, that's actually kind of started. The whole aggregation and reselling, the whole, but consent management is where people get most. I know a lot of people are like, oh, consent management, it's kind of confusing. It's like, well, it's actually the thing that people, because a lot of people, this is what happens. When I say, hey, I'm a data broker, you give me, you know, you download this app, tell me your price, I'll go broker. It's like, well, what happens if I don't want to, you know, I want, I just want out. A lot of people, people are either really excited or they want it out. A lot of people that are rich, they don't need 50 bucks in their pocket. You know, they, they don't care. They're just like, give me more protection. So I have to offer that choice of like, what? You want it? Cool. You want out? Cool. But the only option I want to take is not download the app. So just download the app, make your choice, I'll take it. Here. Uh, quick question. So when I'm just still trying to figure it out, so when I'm opting in, I am giving you essentially the rights to resell the data forward and make some money off it, correct? Yeah. Okay, and when I'm opting out, I'm saying I don't want to resell my information, I just want to keep it private and secure. Is that correct? That is correct, because this is what happens. So if you go to like at and if you go to a telecom and you put opt out, did you really opt out? Right, no, no, I, I follow. So what I'm saying is if I'm, if I'm Sort of protecting that data, uh, am I still able to use the apps? Am I still able to? Oh yeah, yeah. Like it's okay. a, there's core functionality of data, and that's that's required for the app. But secondary stuff that they make money off of, it, they, they, they're not allowed. I mean, there's new regulation coming out more and more on the European side. I mean, the SEC just set a ruling of hey, increase the privacy, and you have a choice to opt in and opt out. 
a lot of the problems is happening that a lot of corporations, when you press opt out, you're going to get a message or the long list, you say opt out, nothing happens. They have, a lot of them don't have the mechanisms to make it happen anyway. So a combination of the services I have to render is, yeah, I'll do the broker back and forth, but if you're, you know, you're a good company, you want to do this right, I'll also sell the additional services, how to ensure that when it's opt out, it's opt out, and when it's opt in, it's opt in. They're going to start getting audited in 2018, especially by the European Union, and they got to comply. Okay. All right, uh, so the problem you stated is that you want to be the gateway of the data and based on our choices that we make, opt in or opt out. But then do you see that there is another dimension the data is not only going through apps, but outside apps world as well. For example, the credit card companies, you know, the uh, Experian and the uh, Credit scoring companies, they got all our credit card data as well. So do you see that might be a potential domain that you guys would look into beyond apps? Uh, yes, I have our experience, MasterCard, Visa, and this puppy. So it's already there. All you have to do is give me you know, your opt-in and opt-out, the uh, information required, and I'll go at it. All right, we're out of time for today, so we're going to close out with our final question. And if you have more questions, you'll get the opportunity to talk to them after One Million Cups is over. Uh, what can the community do for you? Well, besides giving me a, a great feedback and a smile, <laughs> a bit of an attitude right there. Uh, here's the feedback from my, you know, the website. Go in there, check it out. If you like it, don't like it, just shoot me an email. I give you my personal card. If you want to additional thoughts of wording or how what would make it more interesting. If you want to sign up for it, go for it. I mean I should have this app up and running in two months or three months, depending on the money. So. All right, one more round of applause for data stopping. All right, just one little more message. Um, if you'd like to be involved, whether that's volunteering with us, uh, being a coordinator, presenting, or even sponsoring, uh, you can find one of us. Um, we'll be we'll be mingling and networking as well, and then or you can email us at dallas at one million cups dot com. But uh, we encourage you to subscribe, like everything, share, bring a friend every time. Uh, it's always a, it's always a great great chance to see and meet everybody in the community. Uh, but without further ado, we'd like to just wrap this up um, with a few more announcements, some special announcements from. Our CEO of the deck, Trey Bowles. So everyone, please stand up, give him a big welcome. Hey Good morning. Uh, real quick, thank you guys for being here. It's exciting to see you after um, a long night for a lot of you, I'm sure. Um, want to bring up, there's a couple events coming up soon we want to make sure you guys are uh, aware of. Uh, starting first tomorrow at 12 p.m., the Addison Treehouse is hosting their first online chat so you can send questions in and people can respond. It's going to be this sort of online um, experiment to see if, if this Twitter sort of chat thing can work. So please check that out. Shelly's in the back. I think she's watching Hillary speak right now, so she's not paying attention. But if you want to talk to Shelly from the Treehouse, she can help you out there. Second of all, um, next week on the 16th, uh, there's two great events. You got the Health Wildcatters Pitch Day, which is from uh, two, 2 to 5. 2 to 5? 2.30. 2 30 to 5 at the Majestic. And then there is a pitch competition uh, that was put together between the DEC and Tech Wildcatters, sponsored by Comerica, called Pitchocracy. And we just had a week of public voting, and we announced this morning that Partake Golf is the winner of the public voting process, so they get a guaranteed spot in the finals. So it's 6.30 next Wednesday night. Is that the sixth Wednesday? 16th? Yes. Okay. Uh, we will have this big event with drinks and food and fun and stuff like that. It's going to be at the Bank of America Tower. There's a bunch of stuff online about it. We'll make sure you guys get into it. But please come out and support those companies. The winner of that uh, pitch contest will get an automatic entrance into the Tech Wildcatters Accelerator. Six months of free co-working at the deck. Um, and it'll be a great opportunity to, to highlight some great startup companies in Dallas. Is there any other events that you guys know about that, some, that you want to make sure we, we know about? There's also the event board by the elevator. And the event board tells all. <laughs> so thank you. We will see you online tomorrow at noon for the uh, Addison Treehouse Twitter chat. 
and uh, you guys have a great day. Thanks for coming in.